So this morning started off like every morning, brushing my teeth, giving my tongue a good little scrape. But when I headed to the kitchen to get my tea ready for the morning, I remembered that Gabrielle from the week prior had been procrastinating dishes majorly, so I figured that I would boil the water for my tea and get started on the dishes as that water was boiling. As I was doing the dishes this morning, I was thinking about how funny it is that we build up this big story and this big resistance to the things that we're procrastinating when really, when we actually get to doing them, it only takes us like maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Like I said, I have been procrastinating touching these dishes for a week, if not more. But as soon as I started doing them, I realized it wasn't that big of a deal. So I guess this is a lovely little lesson that I learned this morning, or at least was reminded of, that usually the hardest part about doing something that we don't want to do is starting. And once we start, it's a lot easier than we think it's going to be. By the time dishes were done, the water was more than ready, so it was time to make tea and settle into the living room to make a plan for the day. On my days that are open and completely free, I always like to take a couple minutes to sit down and ask myself, what would the perfect version of today look like? What are the things that I want to get done? What are some fun things that I'd like to do? And this isn't really a list in the traditional sense because I'm not really aiming to get every single thing that I write down done in this day. It's more so just a North Star because I don't know about you, but I'm very easily distracted. So as I'm going throughout the day, I can have this list in front of me and have a list of intentional options to choose from instead of just wasting my time bouncing around or on my phone. And I don't know, doing this little practice in the morning just kind of helps me keep my energy focused on the things that I've decided actually matter for me in that day. Since it was raining outside today, I decided I wanted to be extra cozy. So I chose my biggest, chunkiest wool sweater. And I also made sure before leaving the house to put on my special concoction blend of essential oils that's not really that special. I just really like smelling like a crystal shop. And also obviously putting on some deodorant. This is actually a new smell from the Routine brand, it's called superstar and it smells like vanilla and cardamom and black pepper it smells very warm very cozy now they're all cozied up suited up for the day it's time to leave my cozy little house and go out into the real world to run some errands waiting for pairing pad The first adventure of the day was finding a new planner. Now, as much as I've tried getting into organizing my days and my weeks and my months and just my life online, there's just something different about actually being able to write things down on paper and see it physically. For some reason, it just works a lot better in my brain when I can actually see everything on paper and flip between pages. Now, I've been getting my planners from Winners or Marshalls or HomeSense for like the past three years now because A, it's less expensive, and B, I really like this brand that they carry called Fringe. I can be a little picky when it comes to planners because I need a page that has the full month showing, but I also need individual squares for every day of the week, if that makes sense. I like being able to see everything that's happening in my week, but also a place where I can see everything that's happening in the month. And this brand does that really well, so I've been buying their planners for the past three years. They always have the same layout, so today I just had to pick between what size I wanted, and I ended up going with the smaller one because I figured it would probably be more practical. And then every time I go to Marshalls or Winners, I always check and see if they have icebreaker socks because they're an amazing brand. And merino wool socks are just superior, but they're kind of expensive new, but Winners gets like the defective ones, so they're a lot cheaper. So I always pick up a couple pairs if they have them. The next stop on the list was Home Depot because I needed a new pot to be able to replant some monsteras that I had been propagating for a while. They kind of started dying in the water and getting really gross, so I figured it was probably time to put them in some soil. But when I got to Home Depot, they were sold out of literally every single size of the terracotta pots that I usually get. I usually get them from here because they're so much less expensive than everywhere else. So I ended up just kind of looking at the flowers for a little and thought it was really funny that they had their sprinkler on while it was raining. Anyways. Well, I know I decided to go to the next closest hardware store, which just happened to be Rona, and I got this flimsy little growing pot for like $3, and figured that it'll do until I can find a nicer terracotta one. The next stop on the list was Earth's General Store, a cute little local Whole Foods organic bulk zero waste refill kind of store, a little hippie store, because I had run out of my shampoo bar. This one? 
And here's a quick little walk through or sneak peek of the inside. I just think the character that this place has is so sweet. Next stop was Value Village to drop off some donations and get a little coupon. And I also actually ended up finding some vintage Lululemon flares and this stoneware muffin dish. And when I was checking out, apparently it was National Thrift Day. So the little supervisor checkout lady asked if I wanted a pin. And of course I said yes. So here's me opening and showing you the pin. Last stop before going home was emptying out my recycling at the local little community recycling drop-off depot center. I don't even know what you call them, but my apartment doesn't do recycling, so I've got to do it myself, being a responsible adult. So I tried on the flares, they're pretty cute, and then I realized that I literally have a pair of brown Lululemon flared pants, so I'm probably gonna end up returning them, but it's cool that they worked out. But okay, seriously, I was so excited to try out this stoneware muffin pan that I had thrifted because no word of a lie, I've been wanting either a cast iron or a stoneware muffin pan and have been manifesting either one of the possibilities showing up at a thrift store because I'm just not gonna pay full price for one new on this university student budget. And I just think it's insane that I found this one because this model is discontinued this pampered chef one they're made in the states the quality is superior it's probably gonna last longer than i will aka outlive me and stoneware usually retails easily for over a hundred dollars and i got this one for eight to deep clean stoneware this lady on the internet told me that i should just make this baking soda paste and let it sit on there for 10 to 20 minutes so i did that and while it was sitting i decided what a better time to repot or i guess properly plant my very unhappy monstera propagations By the time I was done that, it was time to rinse off my new pan and time to make some muffins. I tried out this recipe from Cookie and Kate. I'll leave the link in the description. Basically, it's just some melted coconut oil or extra virgin olive oil, half a cup of sweetener, so either honey or maple syrup, some eggs at room temperature, obviously mashed banana, some milk or water, baking soda, vanilla, salt, cinnamon, whole wheat flour, some oats, and then I decided to put in some crushed nuts and some chocolate chips. And then I just sprinkled some oats and some sugar on top. And okay, I will say, I understand now why this stoneware stuff is so freakishly expensive because all I did was put a little bit of canola oil on the inside of each little well and no part of these muffins stuck. Pretty impressive, actually. <laughs> Also, cheers to whoever is behind the Cookie and Kate website, because these muffins actually turned out delicious. <laughs> Those are good. So as you might have guessed, um, I accidentally tripped and fell into my chair and fell asleep. So by the time I woke up, I realized it was maybe a couple hours past when I first tripped and fell into my chair. And to be honest, I probably could have stayed there. This is my favorite napping chair. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Anyhow, I did eventually decide to get up and out of it. Went and looked at my list of things that I wanted to get done today and settled on doing some video editing slash youtube -y stuff. After a while of that, I eventually got up and made a really lazy dinner. And while my pizza was in the oven, I made some tea, hooked up my stereo, and listened to Gregory Allen Isaacoff's new album because I'd only heard one of the songs from it and I wanted to hear the rest. A 
along with having a mini dance party. I also use this time to do a quick little speed clean of everything that I had just been working on to kind of close that chapter of my day. And honestly, once I ate my supper, I didn't do a whole lot for the rest of the night. I sat on my couch and stared off into space for a little bit, and then I spent some time looking at some cool film photos on Pinterest. And then I brushed my teeth, washed my face, took a quick rinse, and decided it was time for bed. So with that, I bring you to the end of the video. Here are a couple suggestions that YouTube thinks you might like. Go ahead, try it out, see if they know how to do their job well. As always, thank you so much for spending this little chunk of your day with me here in our little corner of the internet. I really do hope this video finds you well. I hope you're taking care of yourself, and I will see you in the next one.